grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text comes from the Acts chapter 17, verses 16 and following. When Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit provoked him, and he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some were the Epicureans and Stoic philosophers, also conversed with him. And some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others say, he seems to be preaching of foreign di divinities because he was preaching Jesus and his resurrection. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I have been to one of the best educations you could possibly get in the theological world. My professors were gold standard PhD from universities all over the world that are well known. Men who have learned more than I can ever imagine, who could read the word of God in the Greek and Hebrew by just opening up the scriptures and reading it at that level. And not only were they this intellectual gift of the church, they, they, uh, I've also read the great theologians, Luther, Augustine, Paul, and there's many others. And I have seen the world and I've talked. So when I go out into the world with all this education, with all these great people that have taught me, what do you think the world thinks of me? I think they think I'm a babbler. I think you think I'm a babbler sometimes too, to be honest. It's not my fault. If you call me a babbler, I say it as, I take a compliment. They called Paul one too, so I'm in good company. They're just not impressed with Christianity, our world. Not then and not now. And if you think that's not impressive to the world, what do you think they think about of a 30-year-old man who is poor from nowhere, nowhere, nowhere in particular, with no power, who in three years dies on the cross, do you, who was a carpenter by trade before he started preaching? Do you think they're impressed with Jesus? They are not. And who dies on a cross? But Paul reminds them there is the resurrection. And that makes all the difference. Paul went onto the streets, into the universities, into the churches. Some listened, some called him names. I want to take a moment uh, to talk about the two groups real quick in our text. The Epicureans. I'm not going to go into deep. It's a Greek philosophy. But I'll tell you this. They were a little bit hedonist which I don't know what a little hedonist is, but that's what they were. Uh, we are not as Christians. Their, vir their virtue was peace of mind. They always looked for peace of mind, so they, had a, a, they did not get involved in politics because that would ruin your peace of mind. So they were correct there. Um, and they had no fear of any god. That's the Epicureans. The Stoics and the Epicureans did not like each other. The Stoics, uh, they believed that love... Um, uh, they loved to argue in the street. They were theological and philosophical nerds, to be honest with you. Virtue brings happiness. And they were big on self-control and not big on emotions. And Paul walks into this group. These learned men, as it were, worldly men. Men who knew the philosophy of the day and everyone else's philosophy too. And he taught he taught simply about Jesus and the resurrection. He simplified it down to its most basic core. Who and how. It must have looked like at some level like an undergraduate freshman student in college walking into the professor's lounge. You know, the guys with the PhDs and they're talking about some important thing with so complicated and the, P and the undergraduate student walks in and just says something simple and basic and the room goes to crickets. But Paul had one thing going for him. He could talk. They called him an Ob obnoxious, foolish, lots of words, chatty, or simply a babbler. And Jesus was quite weird to these Greeks. Jesus is also weird to the unbelieving Americans of today, in your life, in your society, where you walk. 
And the world has names for us. Sometimes babbler is the best name they would give us. I think they got terrible names for us. And yes, I understand that sometimes you can talk too much. Over-explain, get too involved. But yet at the same time, Paul is speaking in simplistic terms. Could you have imagined if Paul with those Greeks stood up and said, let me explain to you the whole doctrine of Christianity. Let me explain to you the whole of the word of God. Let me explain to you everything that Jesus taught. And Paul could have done it. He's capable of the work. Could you imagine if all the doctrine of Christianity you try to impart on the first unbelieving person you find in the streets? Try it. Everything. I mean everything, not the small catechism, the whole of scriptures. Talk to someone who knows nothing of Christ like that and see how that looks and see how productive it is. But it's even worse. For some Christians, we choose the wrong doctrines to even tell the unbelieving world. Paul got it right. He preached Christ and the resurrection. And that was it for those people. And when faith happens, more and more knowledge comes. I don't leave anyone as children of this, but they have to start somewhere. And, and I see such poor starting points with evangelism. Scaring people with hell isn't going to work. If it did, Paul would have used it. If proclaiming that you, uh, Jesus, uh, Christianity is a life insurance policy for paradise, well, if that would have worked, Paul would have used it as well. Or maybe uh, you could sit there and go, let me explain all the sins that you commit and how wrong they are in God's eyes. Oh, wait a minute, I've checked and Paul didn't do that either. He preached Christ and him crucified. And it made all the difference. And here's the thing, brothers and sisters in Christ, it actually works. The world does respond to it. Not everyone, but it is responding to it. I struggle when people who are experts try to teach me something, especially if I'm not good at it. It's too complicated. And because they're an expert, they, uh, they don't know how to talk down to an idiot like me. You know, uh, Lord, have patience on anyone who does technology and tries to teach me technology. Rick, you're sainted already. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, and Rick does very fine explaining stuff, by the way, Rick, thank you. But the truth is, sometimes people just need the basics. Tell me how to turn this thing on and how to go to do the basic parts of this for now. That's good enough. And the more I use technology, the more I'll learn. I promise. But I'm not ready yet. The world tells us the same thing. Just tell me about Jesus. Tell me about the resurrection. Paul knew it. Who is Jesus? And what has he done? And why is the resurrection so important? unique and different. I do now believe in my heart of hearts that each and every one of you are capable of doing this just as Paul has now. You know who Jesus is and you know about the resurrection and feel free to babble a little bit about Jesus. Just a little bit. There was a man named Ray Blankenship and he was eating breakfast and a real rainy day, and it's, he's at the, in his kitchen, and there's a window out to the side, and there is a flood going through his yard, basically, in the, in the uh, drainage ditch. And about a quarter mile down the way, there's a culvert, and then it goes off into wherever water goes. And as he's eating, he sees a little girl literally being swept away in the water, jumps out of his seat, and goes running after that girl because he knows if she gets into that culvert, she will not survive. And so he runs and runs after her and he gets in front of her and he jumps into the water and he grabs her and he's holding a rock and the water is pushing and pushing and they're about three feet from that culvert where they both will die. But all of his strength and everything he had, he pulls them both out of the water. And he won the Coast Guard silver medal for life saving. Ray can't swim. But he saved someone from drowning. I'm not interested if you're the theologian at the level of Luther, Paul, or whoever you think it is. I'm not asking you to know what I know or what I've been taught. I'm not asking you to understand the theology that a pastor would know or the great teachers of our, our seminaries. What I'm saying to you is you can do this. You have enough. You're ready to babble a little. You know who Jesus is. 
and you know about the resurrection. The world might call you names, and they might be ugly even. But I also know other names for you as well. Names like child of God, brothers and sisters of Jesus, Christian. You can call us whatever you want. Our Lord calls you his brother and sister. You can handle a little name calling. I tr I'm sure of that as well. So I'll leave you with this. I know now it's kind of popular, especially for the younger crowd, to get a little bit of a, what do you call it, um, uproar on social media. Be a bit of a mixing it up a little bit, upsetting people. Seems like our whole world's kind of getting that way. Um, but if you are going to be that way, I'm going to give you permission only in this one instant. If you're going to get everyone riled up, at least be a babbler for Jesus. And I don't mean like the whole of Christian doctrine. I just mean who Jesus is in the resurrection. I was a baseball player, like these two young men. And one of the things that was built into me from day one was fundamentals. Fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. The game's not going well, fundamentals. Hitting's not going well, fundamentals, right? That ground ball goes through your legs, your fundamentals are wrong. Sometimes in life when it gets complicated and the game is too much and it's out of control and everything like that, you have to go back to just those basic fundamentals on that diamond. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you've been taught, these two boys and all of you, the fundamentals. That Jesus lived, died for your sins and the world's, and he resurrected to prove that he was victorious and that his words were actually true. Those are the fundamentals. They're enough to get you from here to our Lord's side. I guess you don't need a PhD after all for all that stuff. In fact, you are all fully equipped. Go out, be babblers. It's not bad. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.